Welcome back. Well, as we reported yesterday, a summary report of an investigation into Assembly of First Nations National Chief Roseanne Archibald is in the hands of some. According to the report, she was found to have harassed two of the five people who complained and all of their privacy was breached and reprisal was found in their cases. With all the internal strife at the AFN, how much of it matters to the regular person outside of political circles? We're joined by journalists Carrie Benjo and columnist Negan Sinclair to discuss. Carrie Negan, great to have you with us. Uh, Negan, we'll start with you. How does the internal strife at the Assembly of First Nations affect, you know, the average First Nations person? Uh, since the very beginning, almost since Roseanne Archibald was voted in, democratically, I might point out, uh, that it's been just nothing but strife, and, and it's virtually brought the work of the Assembly to a standstill. They've been able to get small resolutions passed, mostly on murder, missing Indigenous women and girls, uh, LGBTQ, two-spirit peoples. But for the most part, the work of the Assembly has stopped uh, because we constantly are in this cycle of uh, fights over leadership and governance has become so petty, in fact, that uh, when the last leadership review happened last summer, uh, there was a real fight of who's going to sit on stage and who's going to sit in the spot of the national chief. The regional chiefs were like, no, absolutely, we get this spot. And the national chief came on stage to much uh, attention. So the point is, is that, you know, they're fighting over, like, who's going to sit where. We're not fighting over issues of poverty, boil water advisory, youth suicides, flooding out of communities. These are some real pivotal issues in the past the assembly's dealt with and it just can't do so. And as Negan points out there, uh, Carrie, you know, we're going to, this is all going to happen again in the next two months, another leadership review, uh, an AGA coming up in Halifax. Um, why do you think that this matters to the outside, to people uh, outside of the few that are involved? I think this is really important because it speaks to a, a broader issue. The AFN is the national body that is supposed to to be speaking on on behalf of all indig all First Nations people. And like Nigan said, there's a lot of issues still facing Indigenous people today. And when we have our national body unable to, to provide that collective voice, it creates this, um, this, um, this situation where there's a lack of confidence and we have First Nations that are now separating their deciding to go out on their own because they they feel that AFN, you know, other tribal councils, you know, regional bodies aren't speaking on their behalf. They feel that maybe they're better off on their own. They they are looking at other ways to amplify their voices and get their issues out there because the voice that's supposed to be theirs is not providing. They're, they're not producing results. Uh, Carrie, you know, the, the AFN's not talking, the national chief's not talking, but when you look online, Carrie, there's a lot of uh, comments about, you know, th this wouldn't be happening if it weren't for the fact that Roseanne Archibald was the first woman to lead the AFN. Do you think that there's uh, something to that? Definitely. Like, the AFN was created in 1982. Um, Roseanne Archibald was the first female chief and since she started there has been a lot of internal strife people not wanting to take her lead you know she's she's saying okay we need to do this she ran on transparency and she's trying to do that and now there's so much coming back on her her leadership is constantly questions and I really have to wonder if it was a male in that position if he took the same stance Roseanne is would he be called you know um, you know, strong, you know, um, a visionary, you know, somebody that is accountable to the people. But no, she's being called a bully. And all these terms that are, are designed to undermine her leadership. I think there is a real um, old boys club that is still in effect here, especially in, in Indigenous politics. I see it among female chiefs. They are still fighting for their space. There should they they preach about equality, but when it comes to sharing space, there really is a lack of wanting to give up the opportunity to, for the female voice. We bring a lot to the conversation, and you know she deserves a chance to speak and do what she needs to do in this position. 
Nigan, uh, the AFN isn't the only uh, organization out there having issues. The Métis National Council's having its issues. Uh, the Métis Nation of Ontario versus numerous uh, First Nations in that province. Uh, what's happening here and what do you think the impact is? Uh, not to mention the Native Women's Association, which there's been trouble, trouble brewing for quite a long time. Here's the challenge is that anyone on any First Nations knows that that there is a great deal of politics. Some of it's very petty. Uh, some of it's very legitimate. I mean, we're talking about issues of bullying, harassment. I mean, these are not light words that the independent uh, research body or the independent uh, uh, investigator has alleged around the national chief. Now, we don't know all of that information. There's more information to come, but I absolutely agree with Carrie that this is something that certainly gender and power uh, has to come into the conversation because there are certain things that are being alleged about the national chief that uh, seems to be indicative of many organizations. Uh, but yet seems to be now a reason to remove her. You know, the fact is that Roseanne Archibald was, was voted in democratically, and you either believe in democracy or you don't. And the fact is that these charges, uh, we don't know the ins and outs of them. They've been permeating for quite a long time, but almost from the very first moment when Roseanne Archibald came in, she has alleged, even during the election campaign, that there has been financial impropriety. There's been certain a nepotism, a kind of a, a family, hiring family, stuff that we see in banned politics all the time. And so for her to come in and clean this up, it's going to involve breaking a lot of eggshells. It's going to be involved talking about people very publicly, not in terms of referring to that as retribution, but talking about it openly. And the fact that the assembly continually is put, putting the attention on her as the bully, but not on the investigation, which seems to be quite evident that there is a great deal of impropriety. There's a lot of smoke. Certainly there would be a lot of fire if there is a lot of smoke. Uh, that that should be where the attention is as much, if not more so, than talking about the ways in which Rosanna Archibald's trying to handle this issue. Carrie Negan, I'm sure this won't be the last time we discuss this issue. Thanks to you both for taking some time. Miigwech, thanks so much.